Hello dog lover, my name is Sar, I'm a dog trainer, also coach dog owners. Welcome to the live uh, video that I'm doing today on the topic of healthy dog is a well-behaved dog. Uh, this is a very interesting topic. I have been inspired and I'm ready to inspire you. And I'll go through all the details that uh, is going to help you to have a well-behaved dog. Now, health of your dog is very connected to your dog's behavior, and I'm going to go all the deep um, through all the details. And if you're new here and you want to become an educated dog lover and have a well-behaved, healthy, and happy dog, consider subscribing to my channel. And if you're live, please let me know, and uh, please uh, feel free to ask any questions that you have uh, in the chat area and I'll answer them uh, as soon as I can. And also today I'm going to talk about a uh, few uh, topics that I have been inspired by. I attended an event yesterday. Uh, Sangeeta, hi, nice to see you uh, in the live in the video. Uh, welcome and please feel free if you have any questions, let me know. Yesterday I event, uh, attended an event, a health related, dog health related event and I got uh, a lot of information and I got inspired and today I decided to come uh, live, go live and uh, talk about some of the things that I've learned and most of the, some of the stuff that I knew also and some of the things that I wanted to talk about and uh, do a video actually about this topic but I decided to go live first and in near future, I'm gonna do a, a short video about it as well. This is a topic that is, I think not many dog owners, uh, not many dog professionals also talk about the connection between your dog's health and your dog's behavior. It's something that I think many dog owners, they don't realize how they're connected and I'm gonna share with you some information that is May, it may also blow your mind. Also, let me know uh, uh, if you have any questions, by the way, yes. Uh, and uh, if you have, if everything is going well, if you can hear me well and you can see me well and everything is great, just let me know on the, in the chat area that uh, if you want to become an educated dog lover, let me know and say yes, and uh, that would be great. Um, so, Yesterday, by the way, I had the opportunity to meet uh, and greet with uh, Rodney Habib and uh, uh, Karen, uh, Karen Beck Becker, uh, one of the world-renowned uh, vets, in the, and uh, I got to have a short uh, interview with uh, these two that I'm going to post that video on Thursday. So keep an eye on for that video is going to be up on up on uh, ready on Thursday and uh, there is one question is it okay to use a collar leash she vomits when I pull it uh, collar leash uh, is it uh, I'm guessing it's a puppy so if it's a puppy I usually suggest to use harness rather than collar uh, you want to work on, yes, it's a puppy. So yeah, for puppies, I suggest to use harness rather than collar. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, puppies tend to have, they're very fragile in general. Um, so you don't want to put too much, uh, she's five months, there we go. Yeah, so, so it's very fragile, it's young. Uh, don't want to put too much uh, pressure on any part of their body and actually that's one of the things that I'm going to talk about the health issues so using wrong tools at the wrong time for example can cause health issues so when you're using a collar a tight collar on your dog or your puppy and your dog is pulling uh, this pulling causes first of all neck injuries uh, causes choking in your puppy uh, causes uh, when they're when they're pulling, it causes you know your uh, the joint and the spine have uh, damages. So when the 
spine and the back, or uh, there is a back injury, and spine injury, uh, this spine goes all the way back to their, throughout their body, and all this negative energy goes through their body and transfers to all over your dog's, uh, puppy's body, and cause, uh, develop, uh, it helps to develop uh, health issues that will be eventually, if it's this, this, this action reaction is repeated constantly, will develop eventually to health issues in near future or you know in future it will develop to health issues. So so you you want to avoid using a collar and use harness so you can expand expand the pressure rather than being just on the on the neck to go somewhere else too. But even if your puppy is wearing a harness and it's still pulling and um, I see that you're saying that she bites the harness and <laughs> tears it. Uh, you got to fit it properly. The harness has to be fit properly. If your puppy is able to get in there and chew on it, that means it's not a good fit. You got to fit it properly. So the neck has to be uh, fitted probably, properly and the, the chest area as well. So you don't have to go really tight. Uh, but you have to fit it properly. So you have to find the right size. I know that's a challenge. Finding harnesses and raincoats or jackets for dogs is a headache. So you, what you want to do, you want to train, try, try, try different harnesses, different colors, different uh, you know jackets until you find the right uh, jacket or the right harness. So go to the pet store that you in your local pet store wherever you're going to get your uh, equipment um, the harness uh, just go through all the harnesses just put them on wear it let it let your puppy wear it and find the right size right fit um, most of the directions on the harnesses or the equipment that you're buying it's it's not accurate so you just have to put it literally put it on your dog and uh, try it and see if it's a good fit if it's a good fit uh, don't buy um, one tip don't buy uh, very thin harnesses buy as thick as you can uh, for the size of your puppy that will help as well uh, good fit uh, take the time get a good fit harness uh, and that will help your puppy to have a better experience uh, also walking and you'll have a better uh, um, experience training your dog. So if, if, if you could possibly go with a harness rather than a uh, collar. Hope that clears out that uh, confusion. If you still have any more questions and comments, let me know. So let's talk about the connection between uh, your dog's health and uh, that behavior. So how are they related? So in general, if we look at a dog, when it comes to behavioral issues, uh, you know, this is, this is a reality of life. Me, I'm dealing with it personally, and in general, as a dog trainer myself, I'm dealing with it. Uh, you're welcome, Sangrita. Uh, Sangita, sorry, Sangita, uh, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing it well. Uh, Sangita, well, yeah. uh, you're welcome. So, as a dog trainer, as a dog owner myself, I, I have, I'm struggling with this issue itself too. So, when we have, uh, you know, as a dog owner, most dog owners, when they have a dog with behavioral issues, they want to have a quick solution, they want to have that magic pill to um, to you know, get over um, the issue that they have with their dog, good. Uh, they and you know the reality is that first of all, um, if you look at your dog, um, when your dog is misbehaving, uh, if there's few things that are happening that is causing your dog to misbehave. One of them is stress. The main reason why your dog is misbehaving is stress. Now, stress is caused with many, uh, by many uh, issues that, that can cause your dog to have stress. 
One of them is your dog's diet, obviously. The other thing is the mental state of mind of your dog. Uh, the other thing is, um, the other uh, could be your dog's health, you know, internally of their feeling. Uh, and I'll go in details a little bit about that. Um, and also, for example, the lack of things that your dog is having or is having too much of certain things or having too little of certain things too. So let's start uh, with, first of all, let me go through, um, go through the five uh, essential needs of your dog that I highly preach in my channel. And if you know me, you know that I just always suggest dog owners to focus on these five daily essential needs of your dog, which is exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection. So I'm going to be a little bit creative today, and I'm going to kind of try to uh, visualize it for you. So as I said, you know, exercise is the number one. Training is second, uh, and if you want to write these down, go ahead and, you know, take notes and, you know, hang out with me and let's learn something and let's uh, get involved. Uh, I'm just going to quickly write them down so you have a visual as well. So I don't know if you can see it. So the first thing is exercise, and then training, and then socialization, and then care, and then affection, okay? So let's talk about the first thing, which is exercise. Uh, these are things uh, that your dog, uh, for, you need to focus on your dog's daily exercise, the physical activity of your dog. Now, there's an argument, how much do you, should you uh, exercise your dog a lot or should you not exercise your dog a lot or not at all? So the argument is, uh, it's very understandable. I would suggest to have this formula in your head, uh, in your mind. Minimum, any dog, any dog, minimum half an hour daily activity. Physical activity is necessary. Now. You can break it down to two 15 minutes activities, or you can break it down, you just do it once, one half an hour. But that's the minimum. Uh, for instance, puppies, they need four uh, sessions of 15 minutes of exercise every day. So that becomes an hour, you know, 15 minutes times four is an hour. So puppies need that much uh, uh, activity. Now. The adult dog needs two half an hour, and a senior dog maybe half an hour, 45 minutes maximum, or an hour maximum again. Depends on each dog, but you gotta provide those uh, exercise and that physical activity for your dog because it is related to your dog's health. Your dog needs, uh, just like humans, needs some physical activity in order to become healthy. You can't have a dog sitting home all day long while you're working and then you come home and you walk your dog for an hour, a half an hour, an hour, and then expect this dog to live a healthy life. Not only your dog is not getting enough exercise, physical activity, it's, not, it's getting a lot of mental stress as well because you're leaving your dog home alone for eight hours and I know reality of life is nowadays that we, we have to work and we, we want to have a dog. But we have to come up with some solutions that we can offer and provide some form of physical activity for our dogs throughout the day. Naturally, it's not natural for dogs to be sitting home all day long. It just, uh, it, it's a disaster. It, it's a disaster to happen anytime soon. So focus on at least providing half an hour minimum, but target an hour for a healthy dog, for a healthy adult dog to provide a good an hour of activity uh, a day. Now more than an hour is not necessary, but it won't harm your dog 
on, if you, unless you have a dog who has behavioral issues, which will come back to it. So if your dog has behavioral issues, uh, you want to focus on maybe 45 minutes an hour of mental, uh, physical stimulation uh, and light physical stimulation. Because your dog is already stressed, you don't want to stress your dog more. Now, you're saying, you may ask, but I'm training, I'm exercising my dog, and that gets my dog tired, therefore it uh, behaves less badly. Yes, if your dog is tired, it physically doesn't have the energy to misbehave, yes. But you're just covering, you're putting the, pro you're putting the problem under the rug. You're, you're hiding it. You're not dealing with the issue properly. You're not dealing with the problem that you have in a way that it's beneficial to your dog or your, yourself. You can always, you have to always think about investing an hour or two hours to tire up your dog in order for your dog to not misbehave, which is backwards. And how long can you go on for that, with that? How many years can you uh, get your dog to tire up so it won't misbehave? So that's a wrong way of looking at exercising our dogs. We have to look at it, what benefits our dogs in form of exercise and provide that exercise for our dogs, that amount of exercise that we need. So she said, I'm gonna go through some of the questions. Tough Dead Tundra 595, glad to see you. I was going to ask you to give me your real name because I'm ha having a hard time <laughs> saying your name all the time. Uh, so for short, I'm gonna call you for now, TT595, TT, double T, 595. Uh, and, uh, I wanted to answer you some one of your questions that you had for me uh, a while ago. You were asking about car sickness or your dog is not settling down in the car. And I'm going to answer that today. I hope you watch it until the end of the video because I'm going to answer that. And everybody else, if is interested about this topic, car sickness and not the dog not settling down in the car, I have an answer, which I'm going to answer it soon as I'm done with my presentation or my talk today. So I have lots of things to talk about. I'm talking about the connection between health and bad behavior. So I just talked about exercise. So let me see. Pink Baby Glam 6989. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Why is my new eight week old puppy not allowing me to leave the room for even a second without crying? Oh. Eight weeks old, eight weeks old, sweet. Uh, I wish I had the eight weeks old puppy. The reason your puppy is crying is because your puppy has been, she's a golden retriever, or even cuter and sweet. The reason your puppy is crying is because she has just been separated from its natural puppy parent, or you know, has gone through this transition, these changes. So it's very vulnerable. Um, okay, it's very vulnerable and it's very sensitive. So this is the age, the, the age that the eight weeks and a little bit longer than that, a little bit younger than that, till four months old of age, your puppy is very sensitive. It, we call it um, the, the the term is of my, um, they're very sensitive. So what that means is anything that happens during this time, uh, whether you do it on purpose or unintentionally, your dog is gonna tattoo that experience in its brain, and it's gonna last the whole life of your dog. Uh, mentally and physically and emotionally and internally. Anything goes wrong with your puppy at this age is going to last a life long, right? Um, so you don't want to be, so you have to understand that it's very sensitive time. 
you can't leave a puppy for a second. They are attached. They are looking for something or someone to attach. If you, if there was a cat or there was a bear, your puppy would have attached itself to that. But now you are the one who's your puppy choosing to attach itself. So you have to understand that, and this is, you know, just like a baby, when you raise a baby, human baby, that's what it goes. It, you have to go through uh, day and night of caring for a baby or a puppy for 24 seven, for the next, I would say, a month to three months. That's the reality of looking at raising a puppy. So, it is very important to have that uh, connection keep continuing with your puppy. Don't worry, your, uh, your puppy uh, needs, uh, is not gonna be needy or attached to you. This is very sensitive at the time. They, are, they need this connection. Um, one other thing that I would suggest you to do, uh, pink baby glam. Uh, the other thing that I would suggest you to do is have your puppy in a crate right beside your bed uh, when you're sleeping at night. So don't, don't leave your puppy separated. Keep your puppy by your bed throughout the night. Uh, through every few hours, get up, pick her up, take her out for a walk. Have other dogs, and she's still doing it, but doing better when they are in the room. She could see me pouring a drink and yelps like she's going to <laughs> a mental breakdown. Uh, thank you. She does it uh, there too. Oh, also, <laughs> yes. So you have to understand, it's a puppy, and it's a uh, it's a very sensitive uh, pup. You know, it's very sensitive time for your puppy. So all these things are signs and signs that your puppy is sensitive and is communicating to you and is telling you that mommy, 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 I need you. Even though there are other dogs, dogs, believe it or not, the reality is that dogs have been bred and designed by humans and they are mostly connected to, dogs are mostly connected to humans than dogs. Okay, so they are designed to be connected and attached to humans rather than other dogs. Um, so your dog, your puppy wants to be with you, doesn't want to be with a dog, you know, even though there are dogs, but you know, they are, <laughs> they are designed to live with us. I am glad that it makes sense. Uh, tundra, tough tundra, um, Sounds like the word tough. Why would my dog run away from me when I am trying to uh, try to, to his leash on him? Okay, that's a good question too. So, tough, tough tundra, then tough tundra, 595, tough tundra. Um, the reason your puppy uh, your dog is running away when you're trying to put the leash on because every time, just think back, okay? I want you to think back and see if this is real, okay? This, is, this, is, this is, has happened. Every time you wanted to go out for, with your dog, okay? Every time you want to go out, you, what is your dog's name? Tough Tundra, what is your dog's name? Can you tell me your dog's name? I feel I felt so bad when my dog is lonely when I'm studying and doing. Homework. Okay, I'll answer that too. Okay, Spanky. All right, Spanky, right? So I bet this is what you do every time you want to go out. Spanky, come on, Spanky, come on, let's go out. Come on, Spanky, where are you? Come on, let's go out. Oh, you're ready? Let's go, let's go, let's go have fun. Where's your leash? Where's your leash? Okay, All right, here we go. And you know that's what you do. I bet you do that, okay? So you are causing your dog to get excited. And then you're expecting your dog not to get excited. Uh, I hope that, I mean, you know, there's one scenario that's, that's what happens. The other scenario is that uh, the owner just, no energy, there's not, nothing going on, and just runs around after the dog. 
So I, I told you that's what you did, right? Uh, so that's what most of dog owners they do. So everybody who's here, learn this lesson, okay? Learn from tough tongue, tough tundra 595. Don't do this. Every time you want to go out, don't get excited. Don't open a champagne bottle because just because you are going out. Be calm, relax, and just calmly go grab the leash. Teach your dog or your puppy to be calm before going out of the, the door. The reason for that is because it seems cute and fun and funny when you do that, when you say, Robert, come on, Robert, let's go, let's go do this. It sounds and feels funny and fun and exciting, but eventually it's going to become a behavior that is going to be unwanted and it's going to drive you crazy and you're, you're, you're a, a great example. Uh, so relaxed energy is the ideal energy for your uh, approach to your dog when you're going to go for a walk. So here's a scenario that the ideal scenario that has to happen when you want to go for a walk. I'm not saying don't talk or interact with your dog. Just go grab the leash and ask your dog to calm, be calm and sit and stay. So your dog is going to go, oh my God, he's going to take me to walk. He or she is going to take me for a walk. It's going to get excited and you're going to run around and all that. And you're just hanging around with your leash and you're just waiting there calmly until your dog calms down. So let's say I want to go out for half an hour walk and I've grabbed the leash and I'm standing here for 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and my dog is still going, oh my God, let's go, come on, let's go, let's go. So after 10 minutes, come on, let's go. After 15 minutes, come on, what's going on? Are we going out or what? After 20 minutes, are we going out? I see you're holding the leash. Are we? So that's when you go and put the leash on. So put the leash on, and if your dog keeps, starts doing this, you, you take it off, you wait again, until your dog goes from this to this, okay? So you, you help your dog to calm down. So let's say I was gonna go for a half an hour walk, and it took me 20 minutes to get from this to this, I'll put the leash on and I'll go for a 10 minutes walk and come back. That 20 minutes that I took every day to calm my dog down before going out is more effective and it's more important than the walk itself. So if I do repeat this activity and exercise every day or every time that I want to go out for a walk with my dog, and I wait there on, without saying anything, without any you know, yelling at my, my dog or without you know, telling him sit and stay because some of your dogs may not know sit and stay. If you want to teach those commands, I, I suggest you to go ahead and teach those commands so you can ask your dog to sit and stay. And if you want a video that you want to learn how to teach your dog to sit and stay, I have a video in my YouTube channel uh, in a playlist called basic obedience training without, with the use of play and praise. Go watch those videos and teach your dog to sit and stay. But if you, your dog doesn't know sit and stay, just stand there. Just stand there until your dog calms down, put the leash on, go for a five, 10 minutes walk, come back and repeat and repeat, repeat. Consistency is the key. So the more you repeat, the better your dog gets. So tough tundra, do that, okay? Don't excite your dog. Co practice calmness with your dog until your dog gets uh, sparky, spanky, until spanky gets it, okay? And you know, four year old, still time, it's not old. What kind of a dog is it spanky anyways? Uh, four year old, still not old, you know, it's not old. You can still teach and train and get expect, expect results from your dog. Um, all right. My puppy seems to eat grass, sand, and stones when I try to get, take out for a walk. Why? Okay. Uh, this is Sangita Rolier. Yes. Uh, good question. 
puppies are experiencing life. Okay, everything, uh, everything is is new for them. The spaniel, chihuahua mix. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. <laughs> All right. Uh, so puppies are experiencing life uh, with their mouth, with their smells, scent, with their eyes, with their ears. They're just experiencing life. But the first thing that they use is their mouth. Okay. So they experiment and experience life to see what it is. What is this? Do I like it? Do I like sand? Do I like paper? Do I like rocks? Do I like <laughs> uh, poop? Do I like this? Do I like that? So they experiment. It's, it's okay for them to experiment. Let them do it. You know, this is another thing that, I, you know, um, we have to let our dogs to experiment, experience life naturally. That is natural behavior. Your dog is doing it because it's natural to behave that way. You shouldn't take away that natural behavior from your dog. Even if you think that it's gonna harm your dog, you have to let your dog to experience it. You know, saying it's dirty or it's rock, yes, for us it's rock, it's dirty, it's crap, right? But for dogs, it, they eat poop, they lick each other's bombs, they sniff each other's bombs, they lick each other's bombs. They can, have, they can tolerate it and it's, it's actually good for them. It's beneficial and it's healthy to have those bacteria and uh, uh, all those bad things that we think that they go through. It's good for them. So let them experience it, let them go through it. Uh, one of the things that I have learned is that you know, allowing a dog to do all this stuff, you know, eating garbage and things like that, and um, going through all this, it, it um, creates a stronger gut, um, gut, uh, gut. So uh, there, is, there are these uh, problems with our dogs that they have leaky gut. I was gonna talk about that, so I'm gonna talk about that too. But let me answer one more question. Um, uh, so Sangita, I hope that answered your question about your dog is eating sand and stones. Uh, he would also be excited when I say we're going to, to the park. Uh, so Tundra, tough Tundra, so don't say things. You know, you know your dog better. Right? You know your dog better than I do, actually. So you know the triggers. You know what triggers your dog to do this and to do that. So don't practice those. Uh, teach yourself first not to practice bad behaviors and then expect from your dogs not to give you bad behaviors. You have to fix yourself first and then expect good behavior. You have to give good behavior to expect good behavior. So you have to learn not to exercise those bad experiences, that bad, bad exercises. Uh, so don't excite your dog, don't say the word we're going to the park, and you know, just end it. Without feeling sorry, feeling bad. Just go ahead and just don't practice those behaviors. Uh, Michelle Mullins, Mullins, I hope I'm pronouncing it well, right? And my three months old pit bull puppies, puppies? want to play instead of using the bathroom when we go outside, what should I do? Um, this is a very good question. Okay, how do I answer this? All right, so you have few puppies and they play instead of going to bathroom. Um, what I want you to do is Create a, a, a structure, create a, a routine for your puppies. Even now, even though they are three months old, you should have started a long time ago, but it's good to start even now. So what I mean by that is structure it is, you have to understand puppies up to, I would say, depend on the breed too, five months, uh, they need to sleep 18 hours a day. So they're basically up six hours, right? So for six hours they eat, sleep, they eat, play, uh, walk, uh, eat, play, walk, eat, play, walk. That's what they do. So during this time, that six hours that you're giving them 
freedom to do whatever they want. Don't give them too much freedom. Um, so the other thing that you can do is remo remove the freedom, uh, have, give, have them in, in a confined area, have them in a controlled environment that you can manage them. Uh, so they are either sleeping or playing uh, or you know working on their chew toys or their toys, playing, uh, they're eating, things like that. And then the other thing that you can do is take your puppies individually every two hours or before and after eating, playing, sleeping. Okay, so every two hours, whether they have to go out or not, you take them out and let them do their business. If they have to do it, they will do it. If they don't do it, bring them back, confined area, supervise them, and then two hours later, take it. Either two hours, every two hours, or before and after eating, sleeping, and eating, uh, playing. Okay, before sleeping, eating, playing. You, before they go to sleep, they go for a pee pee, come back, they go to sleep. As soon as they wake up, they go for a pee pee, and they come back. And they wanna eat, you take them out for a pee pee, bring them down, back, eat, take them for another pee and poo poo. Uh, bring them back, they wanna play, pee pee, back playing, pee pee. You get the idea. So that would help you to have, to create a structure and routine for your puppies. Plus you will have, um, uh, you will have better management of your puppies. Your puppies are gonna be under control. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, let me know, uh, Michelle, uh, and I will explain a little bit more. Uh, Prince Kumar, my dog wants me to chase him for toys. I want to see how to teach fetch dogs. Okay, this is a, oh yes, I remember your, your question. Yeah, you requested for me to do a fetch uh, video. I'm still working on it. I have a video that I've done with Harvey. I'm not sure if I can use that. I wanna see how it goes. Uh, Harvey is my other beagle. I don't have his picture now, but I will make a video. I will let you know, but let me give you a quick uh, quick uh, overview of what you're going to do, okay? And everybody else, you know, pay attention. This is a good game to play with your puppy or your dog. You can teach it and you, can, you have to play it this way. You don't, you, I don't like when you go to a park and you throw the ball and then your dog chases the ball and whether they bring or not and you chase the dog and they run away and they don't bring the ball or are and, Anything like that, it becomes a very uh, uh, bad game, and it becomes uh, stressful for you, as you say. You know, your dog, your puppy is asking you to chase it instead of playing fetch. So, here's the proper way of playing fetch, and you know, I'll give you a good breakdown, and it will make sense. So, first of all, you have to teach your dog the commands of sit, stay, come. Sit, stay, come. These three commands has to be taught to your puppy or your dog before you start playing fetch. Your dog has to know these three commands. Second, you need to have a long leash. If you have a long leash, you can start practicing this uh, game with your dog. Now, the reason you're teaching your dog sit, stay, come is because when you throw the ball, your dog goes for it, grabs it and you say, Rover, come. Rover comes to you and you say, sit, stay, grab the ball, throw the ball. You say, Rover, the dog goes and uh, chases the ball and grabs the ball and you say, Rover, come. Rover comes, repeat, sit, stay, grab the ball, throw the ball. That's the way it should be played, okay? So you, you teach the dog, not only your you're playing the game of fetch with your dog, you're practicing the commands of sit, stay, come. And the reason you're having a long leash is because you don't want your dog to take off, right? So you have the dog on a long leash, I would say 20, 20 feet leash, 20, 30 feet leash. Start with a six foot leash, 
start with the leash that you have currently, probably it's six foot leash. Start with the six foot leash. If you need to make it longer, make it 12 foot, attach two leashes to, to, to each other together, and then make it 12 feet and you know throw the ball 10, 11, 12 feet away and ask your dog to go grab it, grab the leash, not pull your dog, you don't fish your dog, ask your dog to come, so ask your dog to come, you're practicing recall command, come command, your dog comes to you, you ask your dog to sit, sits, you say stay, grab the ball, you don't have to throw it right away, you don't have to keep continuously doing this, stay, grab the ball, relax, wait 30 seconds, a minute, throw the ball, ask your dog to go get it. That's how you play. I hope it makes sense. It's, if you play it that way, that's a proper, proper way of playing fetch. If you play it that way, not only you're exercising your dog, so many people ask me, what is physical and mental stimulation? What does physical and mental stimulation mean? That's what it means. Not only you're training your dog, you're physically exercising your dog. Your dog is getting physical and mental stimulation at the same time. So you're gonna play this fetch that I just taught you for maximum 15 minutes, maximum. If you have a young puppy, six months old, maximum five minutes. If you have an adult dog, adult, well, in healthy condition and all that, you play for 10 minutes, maximum 15 minutes. Okay, if you have a mature older dog, you know, five, 10 minutes, all right? And if you play that way, it will be awesome. Does it make sense, Prince Kumar? I hope that answers your question. Okay. Uh, I think the next one is Tough Tundra. Yes, you are already almost at 2,000 subscribers. You are growing so fast. Yes, I am very excited about the growth of my channel. I'm very excited. I'm very thankful. And I'm very appreciative from, for every single uh, subscriber like you who have joined my community. And I hope uh, you're benefiting from these uh, videos that I'm producing and from live, channel, live videos like this. And I hope everything that I'm teaching you guys is you're ha having a good time, you're enjoying it, and you're benefiting from them. I, I want to thank you, every one of you. And yes, soon I'm going to hit 2,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Uh, I can't look, I'm looking forward to hit 5,000, actually, very soon. And that would be very exciting. And soon, hopefully, 10,000, and maybe 100,000 anytime soon. So that's great. Yeah, thank you. I'm very excited. Um, let me see. Yeah. All right, Tough Tundra, I'll see you later. Uh, Sangria, thanks. Yes, that's a, my connection is bad. I can't see you anymore. Black screen. Uh, is everybody else uh, having a good connection? Are you having Are you having trouble with my video or audio uh, at the moment? If not, I'm going to continue. If everything is good, I'm going to continue with the main topic that I was going to talk tonight about, which was connection between your dog's health and uh, its behavior. Good here. All right. I think we're doing good. Uh, Mich uh, Michelle, uh, please check your connection or you have to maybe refresh the page, but you should be okay. Um, all right, let's talk about the second reason of connection, the connection between health and bad behavior. So many dog owners and dog trainers, when it comes to bad behavior, they mainly focus on behavior, right? So they say, you know what, my dog is doing this behavior, rather than whatever it is, you know, barking, growling, attacking, has separation anxiety, or, uh, you know, it is, um, is having this behavioral issue and that behavioral issue, first thing they do is they call a, a dog trainer. And I understand that's what you should do first. As a responsible dog owner, the first thing that I would check is the health of the dog. 
the health of, the health of your dog is very connected to behavior of your dog. The reason for that is because it is all internal before it becomes external. So let me explain what I mean by that. All the problems start with stress. And stress is something that is internal, okay? It comes within. If your dog has stress internally, it will show it externally with behavior. So many dog owners, they don't realize that their bad dog's bad behavior is connected to the health because maybe their dog has some health issues like, you know, um, hip dysplasia. Maybe they have injury somewhere in their body and they're not telling you. Dogs have the ability to hide pain and don't share it with you. And when they do that, you know, it's very bad because by the time you find out, it, it is too late. By the time you find out that there is a health issue with your dog, a major health issue, it's already too late. The damage is really done and it has become a major issue. So what happens, your dog is now uh, in bad health and bad behavior. So your bad dog went from having bad health to bad behavior and causes a lot more issues to develop too. So it all starts from stress. If your dog has stressful life, it will cause them to have health issues, mental issues, which is gonna cause health uh, behavioral issues. I hope that is making sense. So one of the main things that I have learned, and I'm still uh, exploring this, is called leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut uh, is the main core of humans and dogs, animals, uh, that when it's damaged, it causes a lot of health issues to develop from, your, uh, from the blood cells to brain uh, activities. So if, you're, if yours or your dog's gut is not healthy, for instance, your dog is going to have uh, behavioral issues. So this is very interesting. I, I personally kind of knew about it, but now I'm, I know a little bit more about it, and I'm, that's why I'm sharing it with, with you. So for example, lack of iodine in dogs can cause them to have aggression issues. So this is something like, you know, uh, We've never looked at it that way. We've never seen what is the connection between microbic health issues to behavioral issues. And now I'm kind of exploring this path now. Now, the other thing that I always uh, suggest to dog owners is, for example, uh, and if you are, a, you are a, a, a subscriber to my channel and you have watched my videos, you know that I am a, a supporter of not using treats or food to train dogs. That one of the main reasons that I, I disagree to use uh, treats to train dogs is because First of all, every time we use treats to train a dog, we're giving them a food to eat. So every time a dog eats or a human eats, the insulin level, it spikes the insulin level. And every time the insulin level spikes, there is a negative reaction in yours and your dog's body happening. So nowadays we are talking about and thinking about uh, I don't know if you've heard about this term, uh, intermit fa intermi intermittent fasting, IF, or it happens in keto, uh, the, uh, ketos, uh, ketosis. So I don't want to confuse you with these words and these technical words, but what I want you to focus on is every time we or our dogs or animals eat, they, it spikes their insulin level. So one of the things that you have to understand, many animals, especially wild animals, 
when they are in the wild, they will eat everything first of all, but also they are scavengers and they will eat. When they are feeling hungry, they will go and uh, they will find something to eat and they will hunt something and they will eat that. Great, Michelle. Um, so every time they are hungry, they go and hunt and they eat and then they leave the carcass and they take off, right? Uh, so they don't, they don't store the food. They don't say, you know what, I'm going to store this food for later <laughs> or I'm going to hide it or this and that. They just eat it and just leave it. They, they eat as much as they want uh, or they can and then they take, leave it and they go. Uh, they don't constantly eat all day long, right? So unlike humans, that we humans, we eat breakfast, dinner, lunch, and dinner, and in between we have dessert and snacks and this and that. We're eating all day long. Whereas animals, they don't eat as much as we do. And if they eat, it's only because they are hungry to eat. So training dogs using food and treats can cause health issues also to develop in your dog without you knowing. And you know, the reality is that dog training using treats is the foundation of dog training. And I agree to disagree with that. You know, in a way, I wanna move, create a movement that we, can, we shouldn't focus on training our dogs using food or treats because not only it's not natural to treat uh, to train dogs with treats it causes health issues some of you and some people have asked me what if i give healthy treats to my dogs the problem is uh, again as i said every time no matter if it's a good food or if it's a bad treat or it's a good the best most expensive treat you're feeding your dog every time, whether that dog is eating good food or crappy food or good treat or a crappy treat, it spikes the insulin level. So it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what you feed, it will cause health issues. So you wanna avoid using treats in general to train dogs, not only because, again, it's not healthy, I have a lot of videos that I have talked about why you shouldn't use treats to train your dog because not only you're causing health issues, you're causing your dog to not understand the concept of training itself. So understanding this little cue that we shouldn't feed our dogs, it's a, it's a, it's a cue that we have to take and understand that we need to change the way we train our dogs. Those days should be over now. Treat training should be gone. We have to focus on building a relationship-based training with our dogs. You have to have a, a connection with your dog. You, when, is, when was the last time that you said, you know what, I'm gonna take certain time of, certain day or time of my life and spend the time with my dog. There are very few of us who can do that or who will do that. We don't sacrifice our lives for our dogs and we expect them to behave properly and behave normal and not have behavioral issues. After understanding that everything that we do may or may not cause stress in our dogs, whether we are feeding them good food or bad food, or spending time with our dogs or not, all these are related to the reasons why it may or may not cause stress in our dogs and that will cause our dogs to develop health and behavioral issues. So when we talk about this stuff, when we are talking about stress, as I said in the beginning, stress can cause your dog to have health issues and you and so and you yourself your dog owner yourself, stress can cause you and your dog to have health issues and also behavioral issues. Stress causes us not to have sleep. Stress causes us to think the wrong things and make the wrong choices. The same thing happens in our dogs. When we stress them, 
they make the wrong choices. They don't want to live like that. They don't want to be aggressive. They don't want to be reactive. They don't want to be barking all day. They don't want to be nipping people. They don't want to uh, drive you crazy. They don't want to live like that. They want to live a peaceful, healthy life. And as a dog owner ourselves, it's, it's our responsibility to provide that life for our dogs. Whereas when we start thinking about providing a healthy, balanced, and less stressful life for our dogs, you'll see that we're going to project that energy to our own life. It will change our lives. So our dogs are trying to help us to live a better life. So here's what I'm saying. If you see that your dog is reactive, is aggressive, is driving you crazy, is giving you a message that you need to change. You need to be focusing on distressing your life, your dog's life, your family's life, your, your lives of people around you. you. It's a sign that they're giving us. They can't talk to us. They can't tell us that you suck. You are stressed. You are driving me crazy. They can't tell us. You know what I mean? So they act. They react. They behave badly. They do this and that to give us to the message that we're not living a good life. They're sacrificing their lives for us. Even though we went and got our dogs, they're sacrificing their lives and giving us the message that we need to focus on the reality of life. Your phone, your computer, your work, your whatever you're focused on is not the reality of life. The reality of life is having compassion and understanding that your dog and you need to have a less stressful life. The way you're going to have to you have to figure out how to live a less stressful life. It's, it's a challenge for all of us to figure out how to live a less stressful life. And I know all of you have work to do, bills to pay, things to responsibility, you have responsibilities and this and that. But somehow we have to become a better human in order for our dogs to be the better dogs. Our dogs are the pro projects and reflection of our lives. If your dog or our dogs are misbehaving again, if they're driving you crazy, if they are, if they are making your life horrible, miserable, it's a sign. It's a sign that there is something going on with our lives. Let me give you an example. I wrote a book a few years ago, and I've used that example, and I'm going to use it one more time. I was called to a home of a couple who had a dog, who the dog was driving them crazy. And they, they were blaming the dog. The dog is done, is crazy, is gone, right? So I went and I visited them. I already knew the answer. I visited them. And I asked them, so what is wrong? So the wife started saying that, oh, he, uh, you know, he's doing this and that, he's barking and nipping at people and he's uh, aggressive towards this and that and sees another dog starts barking. So these are all signs of a dog who's stressed internally, physically, mentally, emotionally, health-wise, okay? And I asked, so give me a, routine of your day. Give me a plan of your day. How does the day go in your lives? So the wife said the husband gets up in the morning and walks the dog. Some days walks the dog, gets up in the morning, walks the dog. Some days I have to get up in the morning. Even though I want him to walk him a little bit more, but he doesn't. He's lazy. He has to. The husband says, look, I have to go to work. I can't just walk the dog every day. Uh, all the time, you know, I'm busy and all that. So you're staying home, you know, you're, you, the wife is staying home a couple of days a week, so she can take care of more. And then they started, you know, arguing between them, husband and wife, they were arguing among themselves. 
who was doing that what and who was not doing what and I'm sitting there looking at the dog and the dog is looking at me and I can see in the dog's soul, in the dog's eyes, they're saying, you see what I'm going through? Do you see them? So I felt really sorry for that dog because that dog was, it was stuck in between a relationship that they were not happy in a way to have this dog. The conversations that they had, it meant that they were not happy to have this dog and they, they were blaming all to the dog that was dri driving crazy, driving them crazy and ruining their lives. Whereas their problem was, the main problem was that they had chosen to get the dog, both of them had agreed to get the dog and the dog was stuck in their lives and they were not taking the responsibility to take care of this dog. And the dog had become a problem for them. So I'm not going to go in details what I do, did with that, that couple, but <laughs> basically, if you have a life like that, if anything like that is happening in your life, take a look at yourself, take a look at your life. Your dog is giving you a signal that I'm not healthy. Okay, so we're back. There was a little bit of glitch there. I think it's because the... All right, so I'm... I'm okay, so we're good. So I hope you understand that concept. So your dog's health, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, physical health, but I'm talking about overall health of your dog. You have to provide a good, healthy life for your dog. And that starts with your dog's diet, lifestyle, and everything else. So you got to provide those good opportunities for your dog to have those uh, ability to thrive in your in, in life and you thrive in your life. So take advantage of your dog, having your dog, and listen to your dog and change the way you live. Okay? And in my channel, my goal is to help you to get there. The videos that I produce, the message that I'm producing and sending, it's all about creating that balanced life with our dogs, without causing them to have stress, without having or using treats, food, aversive tools like shock collars, uh, prong collars, force or domination. All we have to do is just look and pay attention at our dogs and deal with our reality of life that we need to back up a little bit, relax, and look at everything from a vast point of view. You can't just look at what is happening now. Look around you, look at everybody who's around you, surrounding you, share some love with your dog, with everybody else. So, Spend some quality time with your dog. Make your life better. Make your life healthier. Educate yourself. Educate your, um, your family to provide good, healthy lifestyle and life for your dog and yourself. Hope that makes sense. Let me answer the last two questions as well. And also, one more thing I wanted to share with you. So when we are, for example, we're using shock collar, this, this is a message for those people who are using shock collars to the, for your, their dog. You're saying that shock collars doesn't help, it doesn't bother your dog, doesn't cause any stress or health issues. The electrical current that you're sending to your dog through that shock collar causes a lot of unbalanced activities happening in your dog. And that those unbalanced activities, un unusual activities in your dog's body, can cause health issues to develop. They are not supposed to be there, but you're sending those electrical currents to your dog's body when you're using shock collars. So there's another reason why you shouldn't use shock collars. All right. So, uh, Sangita. 
We have a question, uh, my dog won't eat biscuit. Let me tell you why your dog <laughs> won't eat biscuit. Because they are crap. That's the reality. It doesn't feel, make them feel good, so they don't want to eat. It's junk, it's garbage. So your dog doesn't feel like eating it, eating garbage. The same thing happens with kibble or dry food. It's garbage. You, you force your dog to eat, your dog is not going to eat. It's, it says, you know, every time I eat this, I feel bad. I don't want to eat this. I'm going to eat some, I want to eat something that makes me feel good. So again, listen to your dog. Your dog is telling you that it doesn't make them feel good. It, they don't like it. They don't want to eat it. So don't force them to eat. Right? So if it's a signal again to you that you have to provide what I call, or what we all call, species appropriate food, species appropriate diet, species appropriate lifestyle. Focus on those. What is species appropriate treat? It's, it's everything that you, you, there is like, you know, um, I would say, um, wheel chews are species appropriate. Bones are species appropriate. Things like that. Biscuits and treats like that are not natural diet of a dog. So when you feed them those unnatural, un, uh, non-species appropriate stuff, they don't feel good. They don't want to eat those. I don't blame it. I hope it makes sense. Right? Uh, and I have EVU elect. How do I train my pup to signal me to go outside for potty break? Oh, very good question. Usually, it takes a little time. So what you're going to do is you're going to hang, for example, you can do this for fun, actually. Get a bell, you know, one of those jingle bells. Hang it by the door that your dog takes and goes out uh, of, you know, the door that you usually or most often is used to go out, hang it really low. Hang it really low that when your puppy is passing, it will touch it and will tingle, make, make that sound as it goes out. So your dog is gonna learn every time I touch this bell, uh, it, I go out and I do my business, right? So, but you have to train your dog, you know, every time, so the way you train your dog is, Remember, before, after, eating, playing, sleeping, you take your dog outside to let them do their business. So every two hours or before and after eating, playing, sleeping, you take your dog and you let your dog touch it and goes out. So this, if it repeats over and over, it depends on, um, I can't predict how many times it's gonna take. It may take 10 times, it may take 20 times. The, let's say you repeat it 20 times. After 20 times, when your dog has experienced this experience that every time I go, I hear that sound and I go and pee, right? So the 21st time, he's gonna come to make that noise because he wants to go and pee. It's very simple. Does it make sense? So hopefully uh, in six or in 10 or 20 or 30 repetitions, eventually your dog or puppy is gonna get it and he's gonna ring the bell and or he's gonna go by the bell, he's gonna to touch it and you're gonna hear it and you're gonna go open the door and let your puppy out. Very simple. What do I give for treats? Okay, good question. Another good question, all right. The reason we give treats to our dogs is uh, for us. EVU elect, you're welcome. I hope you're gonna start working on that today. Let me know how it goes. Uh, so very good question, what, what do I give for treats? When it comes to giving treats to our dogs, I would say now, that it's something that it's a human thing. We wanna give something to our dogs, so we give treats to our dogs. Remember, animals in the wild naturally 
they don't eat treats. They don't f eat food all day long. So a giving treats is a human experience. A humans uh, benefit from it, not the dog. I want you to understand that part first. Does it make sense? Understand that when you're giving treats to your dog, it's for your sake, it's not to, for your dog's sake. You're giving it to make yourself feel good, not your dog. So when your dog, when you give when, treats to your dog, it makes you feel good, but what it causes also, it develops your dog to develop a, a habit bad habit. It starts being, uh, I want to use the word, you know, drug, uh, druggies, what do you call them? <laughs> what do you call those who are dependent on drugs? Addicted, yes, addiction. It makes them, it makes them to become addicted to treats. And then, you start giving treats over and over to your dog, and then day five, um, day five, if you don't give treat, your dog is like, hello, anybody there? Where's the treats? Where are the treats? I was getting treats all the, for the past four or five days, I've been giving, getting treats, where is it? So now, you are a drug dealer. You're <laughs> You're produced, providing drug to your dog. You created a dog who is addicted to treats. So it doesn't make, it's not beneficial to give treats to our dogs. I call, I call when I give treats to my dog, I call it I'm giving dessert to my dog. So what I have done is after my dog has lunch or dinner, I give my dog a treat. Just like, you know, dessert. When you have food, you have dessert. I give him food, uh, I give him something as a dessert, and that becomes its treat. So I don't have to give him treats all day long, for no reason. I, you have to give, also, if you're gonna give treat to a dog, you have to understand that, why are you giving treat to your dog? What has your dog done that you, it deserves treat. Just because it's cute or living is alive doesn't mean that you have to give them treats. If you want to use treats for training, again, bad idea. Watch my videos, how I treat, teach and train dogs without treats. If you want to learn how to train your dog without treats, watch my videos, uh, go to my channel, playlist, um, Playlist and let me just quickly uh, and it's called um, and it's called uh, the, 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 the basic obedience training using play and praise so you can teach your dog um, um, you know the basic obedience or training uh, without using any treats. It's possible to train dogs without treats. All you have to do is just uh, watch those videos and see how it's possible and how simple and easy it is. You know, we make it hard uh, because in our mind, we have this mountain uh, that we need to climb and we think it's hard to train a dog to sit, stay, calm, all that. And we have to use, depend on treats and we have to constantly give our dogs treats. So I want you, uh, that's my goal, to change and create a revolution that changes the way we think about dog training and makes dog owners to become a little bit more educated and aware that we don't need to use trees to train dogs. Now, uh, if you really want to give trees to your dog, I would say give some natural stuff. Um, it seems to like to drink only milk, no dry food. There it is. There's the proof again. Your dog hates dry food, right? Is, I think that's what you mean, uh, Sangrida. Uh, is that what you mean, doesn't like dry food? Again, it's giving you a signal, it's giving you a sign that I don't feel good eating this dry food. It doesn't make me feel good. 
it gives me a bloat, it causes health issues to develop. So what you want to do is go a little bit more natural. I suggest you to go raw diet. Feed your dog, feed your puppy raw diet. Start feeding raw diet. It's not very complicated, it's not dangerous. Um, I will have videos in my channels that I'm going to show you how to feed raw diet. There are several um, channels that I like. I will talk about them. I'll link the video, the, the channel that I would suggest you to watch how to feed raw diet in the description after the live session is over. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Learn how to feed your dog raw diet and feed your dog raw diet instead of dry food. Dry food is not a natural diet for dogs. It's not species appropriate diet for dogs. So don't feed them dry food. Well guys and viewers, I really enjoyed this session today. We went over an hour, an hour and 15 minutes and I think I'm tired. <laughs> Uh, so I really enjoyed it. I'm going to try to do this every Tuesday evening, I think. Uh, I'll try different times of the day, but in, in, the, in the comments area, please let me know if this is a good time for you to be available for, going, for me to go, to go live. I really enjoyed your uh, presence, presence here tonight. I really loved it. I really enjoyed this interaction. I hope I offered you some ideas to so you can go and think about them and change the way you live with your life. And if you like what you see here and what you get here, and if you are not a subscriber to my channel, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell icon as well. That will allow the, uh, the program to notify you as soon as I post a new video or if I go live like this. Uh, and if you know anybody, if you want uh, that you know, is going to benefit from uh, content like this, please share this video with them. Let them let them know. Let's make this happen. I'm looking forward to get uh, to 2,000 subscribers uh, soon. So help me to get there, please. Uh, and if you like everything, and if you have any questions. Um, and let me know and I will be available at all times to answer your questions and help you. And Michelle, uh, this is a great time. Oh, this is a great time. Yes, good, good. Yes, I'll try to um, do at this time. This is a good time for me too. So if everybody is happy, I'm happy too. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this uh, and I'll see you soon. And until next time, have fun with your dogs. Okay, thank you. See you later.